We are now showing how to do a complete scanning of this uh, historical map and how to do the stitching using a free software. Uh, so first of all, um, the camera is uh, connected, so we see now here, uh, we see our hand. And um, first thing is uh, we set up the focus of the camera, the aperture of the camera, um, so basically how each photo has to be taken. Uh, for uh, this uh, uh, work, we can just do the acquisition uh, we will do the acquisition in a row so we close the live view from the software we check that we want to have also the row so we will do also the process the complete process of uh, saving the row images into JPEG exporting them um, so uh, then what we need uh, so we check here that is a row acquisition uh, so we turn on again the live view, so the exposure seems pretty fine. Uh, we need to put uh, a white balance checker. So let me take one. Okay, let's put this one like a white, white reference in the scene. And uh, first of all, remember, we need to define the field of view. So uh, we can uh, choose uh, an area on the map that will be the top. So for example, let's explore uh, this area here. Uh, for example, a little bit higher. Okay, so for example, we have this line over here. We see this line. So I can go up with the camera. Remember, once you define the field of view for your camera, the length and the distance, you have this number and you can just input the number uh, in this uh, here in the field of view setting in this box over here. Okay, so this uh, line is on the top. We set click this one, then we move uh, uh, this line, the line goes down, so we can have an idea of the field of view of this system as it is right now. Okay, so we are moving the camera in up direction. Okay, it's going there. We are almost to the bottom of the acquisition image. Okay, there it is. You see now the line here is on the bottom and we can click this one. So we see now the field of view is this number, three, almost to basically 4,000 is a three, 1969. Uh, okay, now we want to define the panorama. So we move the camera on the left. Okay. So we reach the top left of the camera, of the map that we want to image. Okay, we are almost uh, close to the border. Always look at the camera, the cable, of course. We don't want them to, to get on the way and uh, there we are okay so we want to leave a little bit of one centimeter maybe two 
on the border just to be sure that uh, we have all the map correctly and also makes sense to align the map okay it was a little bit misaligned okay probably like this okay so we click set top left corner and now we move the camera to the bottom also in this process uh, you can check the cables uh, if they are free to move uh, and all the way during this extension from basically from the top left to the bottom right if everything is fine or we can check from this movement here okay so we're going down remember always to move uh, one bottom at a time so now we go down and then we go on the right don't try to click uh, both simultaneously like to make a kind of a diagonal movement because uh, you're gonna crash the software okay it aspect just to do one movement at a time uh, this click that you heard now is basically this uh, Nikon camera once in a while uh, close the shutter and uh, reopen the shutter when we are in a live view this is uh, to preserve uh, basically uh, the sensor because uh, if it stay all the way open it, it warms up too much so basically that's one of the once in a while it close and open again okay so we are now basically close to the bottom there it is so we left two centimeter and now we go to the right Okay, always remember look at the cables that's uh, that's important because we have all these uh, three cases so we have the cable of the motor the X motor now we have the battery cable from the camera and the USB cable uh, also from uh, the camera uh, so we want to be sure that they are not going on the way that they are free to move okay there it is pretty good pretty nice uh, okay we are almost covering all of it and uh, yeah we just uh, we are missing just a few centimeter and we are on the right corner okay we look at the cable it seems fine the motor can move freely okay there we are so there it is uh, the border and we see uh, a white balance card you know so then we can adjust the white balance of the picture this will be set bottom right corner so click this uh, bottom and now you see automatically the software is uh, calculating how many images uh, we need to, to move uh, the positions. Uh, before we start the acquisition, um, I want you to go into settings and we check if everything is fine. Uh, remember, so motor port, pan motor and tilt motor we can leave as they are. Uh, also here camera control. Um, please verify that release on idle is checked so basically we save uh, we don't overheat the motors that's the idea uh, then we want to do the uh, zigzag control click this one so basically we save time in the acquisition because uh, uh, the system acquires an image every time it moves so start from the top acquire the image just going down then move on the right and goes up in this movement of going up on the second column it acquires the images so um so it's much better it's much um, it's much faster then remember the ratio of the digital camera is a three two so that's why this one is correct Overlapping, you can leave uh, 30 and 30 over here. Uh, delay before shooting. Uh, remember, this is a system we have vibration in the environment. So let's have at least uh, uh, four seconds. 
uh, even five seconds. Okay, so because uh, there could be movements, vibration, depending on where you are. So five seconds. The idea is the camera reach the position. Wait five seconds. One, two, three, four, five. Shut. Uh, we have the shooting. Then delay after shooting. Now uh, one second is nice. It's fine because in this case the acquisition time is one sixth of seconds. So it's very fast and it moves. Just uh, to be sure, uh, um, we want to have time after the click. Let's put two seconds. Uh, then here we need to put, remember, the name of the software for the acquisition. The name is a camera control. And uh, we want uh, here in the case keystroke just to have a letter a we do the test so i'm closing the live view and i click test keystroke okay you see now the camera is shooting so the software the scanner software can control the camera uh, we want to go into the folder images over here where there are all the images so we delete everything so it's clean and we want to have this one also open so we can see uh, what kind of images we are taking uh, medium size icons so we can see the process of the acquisition okay there it is so this is the shooting software here it's a fine so we can go back to control panel and basically we are ready uh, to acquire these uh, uh, 4 by 3, so 12 images. Uh, remember, uh, before we start the shooting, live view should be closed. Okay, so now it's closed. We just see here an image of a photo taken before. And, uh, and the software should be uh, on, mm, on top of the other ones. So this is the screen. You have to click here and be sure that the panel and the control panel is black. No, it's not gray out. So for example, if I'm clicking here on the other folder, you see now it's grayed out. I click here, it's black. So it should be black. So the soft, this one is the software controlling the camera. Okay, so we are ready for the acquisition. Start the photo sequence. Uh, so the camera is moving uh, to uh, basically the initial position, the top left. And uh, of course we don't want to touch anything, so we don't uh, increase the vibration in the environment. Um, also we don't want to like pass by the lamps, so we cast shadows, you know, something like that. And um, okay, so basically now we can leave uh, the process uh, uh, to the uh, to the system. Uh, we can stay at the distance and again check the cable are not on the way, which should be not because we tested them before in different position. But just in case, it's a good idea. Okay, so I go here, take a distance from the scanner. So I avoid to actually touch the, ta the, the table with uh, my legs, you know, so it's better like this and the system is running on its own.
Okay, the acquisition is uh, almost done, so it took uh, six minutes to do the movement. Uh, this is the last image, so we are yeah seven minutes doing the scanning, the, the acquisition uh, one by one. Uh, so this is the last uh, last image. So there should be twelve in our uh, folder. And uh, you see here from uh, the graph, uh, the, once uh, the camera has gone over a position, it becomes uh, green. Now the shooting is done, so we click OK and we can check uh, the folder. And there it is, there are 12 images as expected. Then the second step is to uh, make these images from RAW into JPEG and then stitch them together. At this point, we are ready to stitch the images we just collected with Archimedes. So this uh, uh, is the folder containing the 12 images. Uh, it's in a data D um, hard drive in the folder session one. So we, uh, before we actually stitch the images, they are in a raw format we need uh, uh, to save them as a, st a standard photographic uh, um, format, like JPEG, for example. Um, okay, so to do this operation with this uh, transformation from RAW to JPEG, uh, we use RAW Therapy, another free software. So we go here, we have RAW Therapy. Okay. Okay, the software is launched and there it is. So the software um, from these uh, tabs uh, on the left, uh, you see there's a uh, file browser. In file browser, you go to search for the folder containing the images. It's already selected, so we are under D and then there is a session one. Session one, there are these uh, photos. What to do? Uh, you see, we have to edit all these uh, all these images. We can avoid, uh, we can make this process more fast, uh, faster by clicking on one images image, edit this image, and then applying the same edits uh, to the other images. So uh, you need to click and open for the edit the image that contains um, the calibration card. So I go here, I'm clicking here, so here we have some grays. Uh, so what we do, the usual editing for this photo will be going into the processing profile, remember over here on the top left, right, my profile and we have this. Um, so when we do this uh, VIS, uh, remember processing profile, basically this one contains uh, the camera profile and contains uh, like little bit of sharpening we applied to, to the images. Now the image turned blue, this is um, normal because we are talking about raw images and we need now to do the white balance. So we click here, this button, spot white balance, and we click on the second gray of this uh, calibration card. So you see now the image is uh, as a natural color, as, a, as expected. And uh, the only thing we miss uh, is uh, we want to rotate it just for us to see it better. So we click this uh, rotation tool over here, the image is uh, pretty fine. Then at this point, we can go back into File Browser and we see this is the image we just corrected. And uh, what we can do now is uh, uh, we right click on the image. So we see this menu and there is a processing profile operations copy. So basically the information for the editing have been saved and we can apply these same transformations to the other images. So we click on the first image over here to be edited. We, we shift click on the last one. So we selected all the other images. 
then uh, on any of this one we right click with the mouse so we see processing profile operation and we can click paste and there it is so we see now all the transformation have been applied correctly to the other images notice that um, um, the, we have the same transformation so it's not like we have one image brighter the other darker so we change brightness and sun so this is important that the images have to be consistent otherwise when you stitch them together there will be one brighter or it will ha will have a different white balance so that will, will show up in the final stitching and will be ugly okay so the images are perfect they we select also the last one so i'm clicking this one over there the images are all selected and i can export them uh, into jpeg so i i click put to queue these images so the queue is over here and uh, we see it starting automatic to transform them so now everything here is uh, grayed out but basically we can tell where they are going so in the temporary edit this is a folder that i usually create on the desktop then we have a file format is a jpeg and uh, and it's fine so we can open this uh, temporary edit folder there it is and we see it's populated by the edited images okay so uh, by the way what we see here next to each image this uh, pp3 file is basically just a text file containing this uh, transformation information that have been done with the editing so basically uh it's also usual if you want to retrieve information from there uh, to know what we did okay the images are created actually we can delete this pp3 uh, we can clean up so we can do view details type and so we delete all the pp3 file okay so we are left with the 12 images ready to be stitched using yugen we are now ready to the final stitching of these uh, jpeg images so again the images are saved here in the temporary edit on the desktop we use this software called yugin so there it is yugin so this software is a, a panoramic software uh, totally free so you can download from their website and um, so I just started the software and first things uh, on the top menu there is an interface you can choose between a simple advanced and expert I suggest you for this a uh, very simple task uh, to do simple interface first step is to load the image to stitch so we go in uh, you see there is a step one here load images uh, we are already we selected the desktop and the temporary edit and we have the 12 images so we can select all of them click open and the image are loaded uh, into this window uh, this point before going into step number two alignment of the images uh, we need to set here the parameter for the lens so lens type is a normal lens okay that's fine and uh, you see there the software already recognized uh, that uh, mm, the images uh, are done with a 50 millimeter lens which is uh, correct and the focal length multiplier is one so basically this means the uh, the size of the detector basically is another name for uh, the crop factor uh, you know the, uh, now we use a Nikon D800 so the dimension of the sensor is the full frame and this full frame is the unit so means one um, in this case uh, what we want to do is to change uh, the 
uh, focal length of the lens. 50 is correct, though the problem using Yugin for this kind of stitching, the problem is <coughs> that this software is a panoramic software, so it, uh, the software expect, uh, expects that you are doing the, uh, the photo, the photo process, using a panoramic head. So the camera is uh, fixed in the space in one specific position and uh, it's just turning around up and down so into this uh, sphere to make the panorama. In our case uh, with Archimedes uh, we are doing this uh, panoramic acquisition by moving the camera XY across the object. So, uh, in order to instruct the software to do this uh, process, we, mm, we need to trick it a little bit. So, the focal length, uh, instead of 50, let's put a, a big number, like uh, we are using a 1000 millimeter lens. So, when you use a telephoto lens, like this one, 1000, Basically, the angle you move uh, is very little because you have a lot of magnification. Uh, so, using 1000, this is a very mandatory, remember to do that, otherwise the stitching will be out of, um, of sense. So, 1000 for the focal length, then we can click Align. So now the software starts uh, basically analyzing the pixels of each image and comparing them to the other pixels of the other images. So uh, this is, uh, let's say, not an instructed um, alignment process. Uh, so basically the software compare every image with, with every image. Um, okay, so it takes its time. Uh, generally, for example, when we do panoramic infrared reflectography, when we have a large number of images, um, in that case we have hundreds of images, in that case it's important to have, uh, um, to instruct the software that how the images were taken, so up and down, something like that. In this case, since there are just 12 images, or even if there are a little bit more than that, it's fine, it's not a big deal. Okay, so the software has, has done a good job for the alignment of the, um, the map. Okay, so there it is, pretty nice. This is just the preview, so it's basically to show the software is showing that uh, we have all the images complete to make this uh, uh, the map over here. So alignment is done, uh, we are satisfied with it, so we can go into create panorama. So basically here on the top the software suggests what will be the final dimension of this image, of the panorama, so we are in the order of 12,000 by 10,000. Uh, as a format I prefer to use a JPEG, again it's, it's fine. Um, TIFF, so, uh, well this is a always we say TIFF is the best photographic method but uh, it's uh, so big uh, that uh, having large images in a TIFF uh, is a problematic for most of uh, users like um, people with normal computer in your laboratory, conservation laboratory um, it's gonna be a problem. So JPEG you still have very good good quality at a reasonable amount of data, so the space in your hard drive, and it's easy for the computer to handle it. Okay, so we can leave this one exposure correct, low dynamic range, so basically it's stitching the images a simple one together, and we click OK. Uh, the project needs to be saved, so we click OK, uh, here we have a save project file, we save it in the same folder, temporary edit, there it is, uh, we click save and then basically now the software is starting to do a fine job for making the stitching. So this process uh, can, could require like for these images, so 12 images, 7000 by 5000 pixel could take few, five minutes, something like that. And so you see this is crunching all these uh, pixels. 
find the best overlapping uh, and it takes uh, its time and it takes a little bit Okay, and there we are now, so it's done, we have created the panorama, we can close this one and the panorama will be in the temporary edit, so you see basically this is uh, the project, this file so it's extension, is PTO uh, so basically this is the software containing the information how the, uh, the panorama was created so if we want to make some editing uh, to this uh, panorama, change something. We can open. We can open this uh, file. Otherwise, this is the the file we just created. The panorama. Let's see the dimension. Go in properties over here. Mm, no, actually, sorry. We go here. We just leave the mouse. The dimension is a uh, twelve thousand by ten thousand. Uh, this uh, the, the image below was a uh, seven by four thousand. Okay, so we can uh, click this image and there it is. Uh, we can magnify, have uh, the detail we need on this image. Uh, okay, so basically this is how you create uh, uh, these editing images uh, with uh, Yugin. Uh, just a last note, uh, you can do the editing also with the PDGUI. PDGUI is also very nice, it's a, I use it, that in that case it's mandatory for uh, panoramic infrared reflectography because we have plenty of uh, points so it's much better. Um, this software, Yugin, is uh, totally free so if you are just uh, using for technical photography, Yugin is uh, pretty nice.